Hello everyone, welcome back to My Roll My Way. Have the elites starting not to care about you? Have the elites started, I don't know, not realizing real life? That's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm your host, Max, and let's begin. So, a recent poll just came out and it asked Americans how many of them believe in God. And it's gone down quite a bit to now 17% of Americans don't believe in God. Now, surprisingly enough, it's usually the people who actually, you know, young adults, liberals, Democrats, are the least amount that believe in God. And actually, it's many Republicans and conservatives and libertarians who believe more likely in God. And surprisingly enough, people who are conservative and young adults are more likely to believe in God than, than liberals who are young adults. So, it was a very interesting poll, but why do I bring that up? Well, because it comes during a time where we have this new thing, the green energy movement. A very flawed, uh, a very flawed factual-based movement. It has a lack of facts. It takes a paper that explains that the role has zero effects with how we're running it now and that stuff like solar panels and wind turbines would actually destroy our planet a tad bit more than what they want to project you to think. But they'll turn that paper, mix it around and say wind turbines are the way to go and a gasoline plant is destroying our planet. So let's talk about how the green energy movement and specifically our, our, the elite dictators, young adults, especially Democrats, are seizing this movement and taking it down the wrong path. So, uh, Clint Sarr, if you may not know, is John Kerry. He's a very uh, lunatic nut job. He says that the ice cast would have melted by 2013. And look outside, is your house flooded yet? No, because it's because it's June 20th, 2022. So, honestly, his predictions of the end of the world have been totally false, totally unproven. It's been unproven. He says the ice caps would melt by 2013, and it's 2022. They have not melted yet. He's eight years off track. And also, it could be seen again where John Kerry said by 2001, the ice cap would have melted. Do you see where this is going? So now it's 21 years since that happened. And, you know, the ice caps haven't melted yet. It just proves how unrealistic their theories are. Plus, let's talk about economic secretary Janet Yellen. So Janet Yellen is an absolute idiot. She does not know how to run our nation's economic policies. And she has recently said that it's okay that gas prices are rising. Buy yourself an electric car. Take that in the instant for a second. Let's just talk about electric cars real quick. So electric cars, or I just think most people just call them Teslas because that's the main maker of electric cars, are a car that instead of running on gasoline or diesel, runs on pure electricity. Now... The hidden secret they will not tell you about is they're more bad for the environment because the battery inside an electric car, inside an electric car, is made from a, le a rare material, ithium, which has to be stripped mined and ruins nations. For example, the nations that we're told to protect, the ones in Africa, the ones that we give millions and billions of dollars to each year, are stripped mined of this material because that's where it's found to make electric cars. So really, it's actually playing more damage to the environment than just buying a, buying a toy, uh, buying a Prius. It's simple, but they don't want to tell you that because that will hinder their truth. That will hinder their way of pushing life on them. But anyway, so electric car is like sixty thousand dollars to them. That's throwaway cash, but to most Americans, that's a serious investment. Now, you might have to think about that for a second because gas prices are a new record. They've passed five bucks 
No nation has gas under, no, sorry, no state in the United States has a gas under $4. It's around 4 or $5 margin. And then if you go to California, of course, it's all screwed up. It's 8 bucks. So, obviously, it's turned away from uh, the two-buck gas underneath a drunk, you know, mean tweet, orange man bad, of course. The guy who would say, Rosie O'Donnell is bad. Of course, we did not want the mean tweet, so we voted him out, and now we're all screwed. So, many people are now having to make the consideration, thinking, well, when will I fill up my gas tank? Because I cannot afford to put $100 in my gas tank. Because surprisingly enough, it went from people spending $20, $30, $50 at the highest on their gas tank. Now, people on average spending around $100 because... The moment you fill up your car with 20 gallons, 20 gallons of fuel, you're up to a $100 because five, five times 20 would equal 100. So now it's turning away from free bucks when I will say I do miss the days of free dollar gallon because people just store, stared at it like, ah, oh, here it comes. It's a oh, free dollar. We, I think God's punishing us for taking that uh, for granted because three bucks is way better than five dollars a gallon. Now, a lot of people out there, the elites, the dictators out there may be thinking, oh, it's one hundred dollars. That's pocket chain. I'll hand it to my boo yet. Give it to the peasant at the cash register. I'm on my way to my private jet. But to ordinary Americans, especially people, you know, farmers, truckers, workers, you know, kind of the people who keep our world running, it's quite concerning. Because diesel prices, first off, diesel has been always a very high commodity. Very high commodity. You, you had to pay a lot to get diesel. But at least underneath Trump, it was around $3. It, it was not a bad price. It was a perfect error for truckers. And underneath Joe Biden, where it's reaching six, eight, ten dollars, it's starting to affect truckers. And if you are a dumb, dumb, stupid idiot out there who you know votes Democrats and drives an electric car, or Toyota Prius, let me tell you something. So you know when you go to Whole Foods and you buy your buy your vegan protein shakes, well, it got there by a trucker, okay? And the trucker. Is not electric. It's not an electric car. It's not a Tesla. It's it's a diesel vehicle. And the thing is, yeah, there's some trucking companies who made the company pay for the diesel prices, but most truckers are independent. They own their own semi. They fill up their own diesel. And the way they make money is by doing contracts for companies. Like, I got my truck. I'm going to hook up to the Target's trailer. I'll haul it to the other Target. Pretty simple, okay? So... They don't have a company. They don't have a net to fall on. And they can't afford a diesel. They lose money. They lose out on that contract. And now they're poor. Now they're financially struggling. So, many Democrats out there don't realize that. Now let's talk about the other group of people that are being affected by this new green movement we have in the White House. Farmers. So, if you listen to, again, normal gaming to a time P content, I am... Studying to be a farmer, I study agriculture. I've mastered some stuff in agriculture. Let me explain stuff. So fertilizer is the main thing because, yeah, many people just think we pour water because that's what you do with your flowers. But long at a larger scale, you have many people use chemicals or natural fertilizers, stuff like lime, herbicide, chemical mixtures. People we use that to grow our food. And it protects it from stuff like bugs, weeds, stuff that would kill it. So fertilizer prices are on the rise. And, and farmers are historically not making a lot of money. So fertilizer prices have always been high, like $500. But now underneath Biden, they're rising. And if a farmer can't afford fertilizer, he can't grow food, people starve. That's what happened in the Soviet Union. That's why there was many food shortages, because farmers... The state-run farmers couldn't afford state-run fertilizer, and everything just falls apart. Food shortages were very common. So, 
we're entering an era of food shortages. Now, to the since we are a first world, 21st century Western nation, we're just a bunch of spoiled scumbags. We've not had to live a day in our lives where we have to worry about putting food on the table like like a like 20, 20 year old Jose in Venezuela who's trying to find food for his wife and his two children. So let me just basically describe food shortage. So this goes out for all the Democrats. When you go to Whole Foods, your vegans, your vegan tofu may not be there. But me have to switch to something like beef or even getting worse. Everyone will have to fight over food and you're going to see clans who have more powerful equipment taking food from the wheat because it's bound to turn into as tough gates going, the stronger gate going as well. So if you're weak, like a vegan is, you're not going to last for a very long time in food shortages. And we have seen some recent food shortages, for example, baby formula. Now, to the leftists out there who's never had a child, I'm pretty sure never had relations with a nari human in their life, formula is needed for some babies. Now, granted, most some babies can just simply be breastfeed, natural from the source, as healthy as it gets. But some babies do require formula due to allergens and medical conditions. And with the lack of formula, how's the baby going to eat? Because they can't eat normal food like us. They've not developed the uh, they've not just developed a stomach yet for food, for normal food, so they have to rely on formulas for a substitute. And formula, uh, one baby cannot rely on one brand of formula. Each and every single baby is a different individual who re who relies on a different kind of formula. Some require maybe a mixture of dairy free. Some may need extra calcium in theirs. Everyone is different. And then with the shutdown of Abbott, Baby Formula Factory in Michigan, who's, granted, let me just say one thing. This is all the government's fault because they put their eggs in too many in one basket. There's really only four baby formula manufacturers in the United States. And when one of them shuts down, you're going to experience supply shortage, especially the largest one. So... Now everyone's feeling the repercussions, and it's still going on. And I've heard some very, very sad stories from many parents who don't know how they're how they're going to feed their child. They don't know how they're going to feel, feed their baby the next day once it all runs out. And it even affects, uh, especially my sister who works who works. Uh, one of her coworkers recently posted something like, "If you have loved ones in other states, loved ones somewhere." Please tell them to find this specific baby formula because we can't find it here. So it's obviously quite, it's getting to a quite concerning point. Because if you can't feed babies, babies are the next generation. And what happens to them? They starve and then they die if they can't get their food in, in a good amount of time. So then you lose a generation. And then let's say food shortages happen, like you can't buy bread, okay? That generation of people who want to eat bread is going to eventually die out. Now, this is all not the doing of Putin. It's not all the doing of Donald Trump. It's all the doing of the United States government, Biden, the people we elected in office. So they don't know how to run a nation successfully, and we're experiencing the repercussions of it. Because the Green New Deal movement, we, we, must, we must go green. We must go green. So, what have we seen? Now, this isn't a story out of the United States, but a story out of the United Kingdom. You know, one of the, one of the dead nations in our world by now. In Scotland, they tried feeding student bugs. You know, cockroach spider you find on the ground in your house. Because they said, we must encourage them to eat, eat to not eat beef, not eat chicken. They must eat bugs so we can survive the end of the world, green energy. And then, since children are pretty easy to indoctrinate, they're dumb. Maybe a little harsh, but they're dumb. That's what they are. They're easy to indoctrinate. They're going to indoctrinate your parents, and then they're going to form a green climate agenda in the United Kingdom. And soon that could possibly be happening in the United States. Not because of food shortages, possibly soon, though. 
because they want to push their own agenda. They want to push their own agenda of population control. And I guess we could be cutting this into a conspiracy corner episode right here. But let's just say it's the doing of our own government. It's not Putin. It's not Putin ruining the gas prices. It's not Putin giving us misinformation. It's not that. The thing is, Russia and Ukraine are the two world's largest supplier of wheat, grain. You know, stuff that makes bread and cornflakes. We are suffering the effects of that because, again, we decide to, you know, ship stuff from overseas and not focus on our own production. Which kind of makes sense since the United States is more meant for growing corn and soybeans as Ukrainian and Russian, as Ukraine and Russia are more meant for growing wheat. So now you're experiencing the repercussions of it because it's not Putin's fault, it's Joe Biden's fault. And I digress. That was all I have for you guys today. I'm your host, Max, cutting out. Until next time.